everyone, welcome to today's video. You guys asked for it and here it is. This video is about the playing style of Matthias Azato, who is by far one of my favorite guitar players. I'm sure most of you will know who he is, but if you don't, I suggest you go and check out his videos on Instagram and YouTube. His playing style is very musical. He does a lot of beautiful chord melody arrangements and plays with his fingers a lot. So I recommend checking out his version of Don't Dream It's Over to see this for yourself. However, when he plays with a pick and goes into full on shred mode, he still manages to retain a sense of melody, which I think is quite rare these days. So I think that's one of the things that's unique about his playing style. Now the format of these videos has always been to take one particular concept or technique that could be considered a signature characteristic of the person's playing style, show you what it sounds like, talk a bit about the theory, and then at the end show you a couple of different ways that you could implement it into your own playing. And when I was planning this video I found it really hard to pinpoint just one signature characteristic of Matthias Azato's playing style because he does so much. So I've decided to change the format of this video slightly, which means I'm going to start by showing you a couple of licks that contain techniques that you'll hear Matthias use often. Then I'll break down each lick for you and explain the approach to both of them. So starting with lick number one, here's what it sounds like. This entire lick is based around the F major pentatonic scale with some bluesy chromatic notes thrown in there at times. It uses alternate picking, slides and double stops. The first part goes like this. So you start by sliding into position 3 of the major pentatonic scale which looks and sounds like this. And you do this starting from fret 1 on the low E string, which is the note F. So strike the note, followed by 3-5, then 3-5 on the A string, and 3 on the D string. And then the next bit starts on fret 5 of the D string, 5 on the A, 3-5 on the D, and when you reach fret 5, slide up to fret 7 and strike fret 5 on the G. So everything so far has been alternate picked apart from the slide from 5 to 7 on the D string. Now we're into the fourth position of the major pentatonic. But we're not going to stay there for long because the next bit moves up to position 5 and sounds like this. This starts with fret 5 on the D, then a slide from 7 to 10, followed by 7 10 on the G, 8 10 on the B, 10 on the G, 8 10 on the B then 8.13 on the high E. So far we have this. The next part goes like this. This is where the bluesy chromaticism comes in. But really it's just one note that doesn't technically belong to the key of F major and that's this note here on fret 11 which is an E flat. To me this sounds reminiscent of something Stevie Ray Vaughan would play. So you start by picking this note, fret 11 on the high E, then hammer onto 12, pick 11 and pull off to 10, then 13 10 on the B, 13, 12, 10 on the G, and 12 on the D. Now fret 13 on the G string, which is a note A flat, also doesn't technically belong to the key, but because it's played so fast, it works well as a little bluesy flourish that you can add to the major pentatonic. So here's that part once again. 
The next part goes like this. <laughs> Start with a slide from 12 down to 7 on the G. And when you get to fret 7, rapidly slide up to 8 and back to 7, then pull off to 5. So that's a very, very fast slide there. Then after that, without picking the string, pull off from 7 to 5 on the D string as well. Now when you pull off the fret 5 on the D string, you bar the 5th fret of both the D and G strings, pick both strings, hammer on to 7 on both, slide up to 8, back down to 7, and then finish with a pull off to fret 5. So what that is, is basically fourths played as double stops, and you can apply this to the fourth position of the major pentatonic. But please be aware that these notes that you slide up to on fret 8 do not technically belong to the key. Again, it's just one of those little flourishes that sounds good when played really fast. If you stayed on these notes for too long, they would clash with the chords. You could also apply this to position 1 of the major pentatonic. This is something that you hear Matthias do a lot of in his improvisational playing. So let's listen to that entire lick once again. To summarize, the main ideas that you could take from that lick and apply to your own playing include alternate picked licks that move through positions with slides. I find that to be a really useful way of covering the entire neck when you're soloing and not just sticking to one scale position. Adding in small chromatic flourishes for a bluesy effect. If you want to apply that to all positions of the scale, you absolutely can. If you know your major pentatonic scale positions well, all you need to know to add these little flourishes to your playing is where the root note is in each scale position. So once you know where the root note is, you can play a note that's two frets lower than that, and that's your starting point for that little bluesy flourish. So here's the root note F, and then two frets lower is our starting note for our little flourish. Here's F again, and another F, two frets below. And last but not least, using fourths as double stops with slides. You can apply fourths to any two strings, but personally I enjoy the sound of it on the D and G strings the most. And as mentioned earlier, this works particularly well in position four and position one of the major pentatonic. If you're not familiar with all positions of the major pentatonic scale and or you don't know what fourths are, I have an online guitar course available to purchase on Udemy called Bulletproof Guitar Player. It teaches things like these in much more depth along with several other guitar theory concepts that you can actually apply to your playing. So if you're interested, please check the link in the description for 50% off. Okay, now let's move on to lick number two, which sounds like this. So the first part goes like this. So this starts sort of in between the second and third positions of the major pentatonic and begins with a double stop lick that you'll hear Matthias use a lot. To play it, have your first finger on fret 13 on the B string, your third finger on fret 16 on the high E, 
pick both strings at the same time and hammer on to fret 17 on the high E with your pinky. Then strike 16 on the high E and pull off to 15 and then 13, all the while holding down fret 13 on the B string. Then pick 15 and pull off to 13 on the B string. Pick 13 on the high E. Then 15 and pull off to 13 on the B again. And slide down to 10. The next part is in position 1 of the major pentatonic and it goes like this. Pick fret 10 on the high E, 13 10 on the B, 13 12 10 on the G, and 12 on the D string. Then 12 and pull off to 10 on the G, 12 and slide down to 10 on the A string, and pull off to 8. So far we have this. Here's the next bit. So that part's quite simple, all you're doing is ascending the scale from fret 8 on the A string and alternate picking it. And when you're picking, you want to mute the strings with your right hand to get a more percussive sound. And after that we have this. So 12 on the G, then 10 and slide up to 12 with your first finger, pick 14, then 13, 15 on the B, and 13 on the high E. Then you bend fret 15 on the B string up a tone to the major 7th of the scale, and slide to fret 16 and back to 15 as you release the bend, and then pull off to 13. The very last bit goes like this. Start at 14 on the G and slide down to 12. Pull off to 10. Then pick 12 and pull off to 10 on the D and finish with a double stop on fret 10 of the G and B strings. Let's hear the entire lick once again. So the main ideas that you could take from this lick and implement into your own playing would include the very first part of it, which is just a really nice lick that works well in most major progressions. You could also play this on the D and G strings in position one of the major pentatonic, like so. Secondly, descending scale positions using the high E and B strings, like so. Now, I only did that once in the lick that I demonstrated, but you could apply that motion of going note on the high E string, then pull off on the B string, and slide down to a new position and repeat. You can apply that to other areas of the scale as well. And lastly, muting certain parts of passages that use alternate picking. 
So this is a cool technique to use because it adds interesting textures to the overall sound of your playing. So rather than just playing a lick all muted or with no muting at all, just adding it in at certain points provides some nice contrast to the overall sound. Now there are many other concepts and techniques that Mateus uses that I could have mentioned in this video but didn't because I didn't want the video to be too long. So out of curiosity, what would you like to see in a video like this? Drop a comment below and perhaps in the future I'll do another video on some other aspects of Matthias Azato's guitar playing. But anyway, that does it for today's video guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up below and click subscribe for more.